Welcome to lecture 10 on vector valued functions. We entitle this one Functions Point in a Direction An Introduction to Vector Calculus. So far in calculus and in this class, you've contented yourself with studying scalar functions. They might depend on more than one variable, a function of x, y, and z, for example, but in the end, they just produce a number or a scalar. And now we want to investigate functions that produce a vector rather than just a number. This turns out to be a complication that many people struggle with, in my opinion, primarily because the concept simply seems foreign. If I have a scalar function that depends on x and y, I can plot it in 3D as x, y, f of x, y, and you've probably seen these kinds of plots. It's much more difficult to visualize a vector-valued function. However, we can do it in 2D rather simply. Uh, here, what we would do is, because we have a vector at each point in space, we simply plot the vector f of x, y at the point x, y. And that's shown for you for a particular vector function on the left-hand side. Now, you should note that the function f is a vector, which means it has a horizontal component and a vertical component. And if you like to really relate this back to scalar functions, you can think of it as a scalar function multiplied by the unit vector in the x direction plus a scalar function multiplied by a unit vector in the y direction. Those two scalar functions need not be exactly the same, and that's how you would determine the vector. And so sometimes thinking of it in this way is a way that is easier to understand. Now, if you look carefully at this plot, which is looking at unit vectors that are pointing outward, you see there's no unit vector drawn at the origin. And this is because we don't actually know what direction that vector should point in. I think you should think about this for a moment before you move on. For any radius, no matter how small it is, we would have vectors that point out outward. But at zero, we have no idea what direction it will point. And such a point, if that occurs in a vector-valued function, is called a singularity. And notice that the singularity does not require things to necessarily go to infinity. Nothing is going to infinity here. Instead, it simply is a singularity because we cannot construct a well-defined vector field that has a continuous value at the origin for this particular vector field. We're going to try to visualize some different vector-valued functions. The website that is shown here, and I encourage you to explore it on your own, is a nice website to use for visualizing different vector, vector fields. And we're going to use it to visualize a few different ones. Uh, note that it uses i as the horizontal unit vector and j as the vertical unit vector. You've probably seen this notation before. In class, we'll typically be using e sub x and e sub y for those kinds of unit vectors. But for now, we'll use the i and j just like what is used on the website. So here are some of the examples that we're going to try. The first one is going to be x plus y j, x i plus y j. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding x and I'm adding the y. And what you can see is this looks similar to the one that we had before, although now the vectors are growing as we move out. And indeed, the vector now at 0 is exactly 0. And so this is a situation where this vector field is well-defined, even though it looks like it might have a singularity at the origin. Now the next one we're going to consider is minus yi plus xj. And what you can see here is this one has this kind of swirling rotation around it. And it's growing the farther away we get from the center. Uh, it clearly looks like some kind of a vortex or swirling motion around the origin, which clearly is a very special point in this case. OK, our next one is going to be xi minus yj.
This one has this very odd behavior. It kind of reminds me of hyperbolas. Everything seems to be rushing outwards. I'm coming in along the horizontal axis and then getting pushed outwards along, I'm sorry, in along the vertical axis and being pushed outwards along the uh, horizontal axis. And so it has a different kind of swirling motion associated with it. One that looks kind of like two rivers meeting, two equal streams meeting in the center, and something has to give way, and so what gives way is they get pushed outwards. And our next one is similar to the first, but normalized. And so here what you can see is we have this kind of unit vectors all pointing out and then at the origin we have a clear singularity in the system because we do not know what direction that vector should point in. Okay, now that you've seen these different ideas, I would like you to define what a vector valued function is in your own words. We're going to pause the video now and allow you to do that definition. For me, I define it as a vector which has both a magnitude and a direction which is associated with every point in space. An example of where this comes up in physics is Coulomb's law. If you remember, the force at a position R is Q0, the charge of the particle that is at position R, times the electric field at position R. And the electric field we get if it's occurring from a point charge, it'll just be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, the other point charge Q1, times 1 over R minus R1, if that second point charge has a charge Q1 and is located at position R1. If instead we have a charge distribution, we would integrate with a charge density rho of R, R1, over all of those positions R1 where the other charges would lie at. And so those would be the formulas for an electric field, and it's important to remember that for the electric field we always divide out by the charge itself so it's like a force per unit charge is what the electric field is. So now let's take a look at some examples of vector fields. Find the vector field that it consists of a unit vector in 2D that points in the radial direction. I would like you to first see if you could figure out what is this vector field before I show you what it is. So let's pause the video and see if you can determine what is a vector field that is a unit vector that points in the radial direction. And here's the reveal. The answer is the last one that we had looked at before, and that vector field looks like this. Let's move on to our next example. Example two, find the vector field that points at 45 degrees and has a magnitude equal to x plus y squared divided by 8. So it's always pointing in the diagonal direction, but its magnitude is changing as I move through space. But it's changing in this way that is not so easy for me to visualize, perhaps. It's going like x plus y squared with some additional numerical constant. We'll pause the video now and allow you to construct this, see if you can sketch it on a piece of paper, and then we'll do the reveal. And here's the reveal. We have to have the same components along the horizontal and vertical direction, otherwise it won't point in 45 degrees, and then we just have to normalize it. And I get this interesting thing. You can see along the diagonal where x equals minus y, this vector field is 0, has 0 magnitude there. And along the other directions, it increases as x plus y increases, and so it has this very kind of odd-looking pattern that is occurring with the vector field. All right, we have one more example. Find the vector field that points in the tangential direction to a circle and has a magnitude of square root of x squared plus y squared. We're going to go ahead and pause the video, allow you to try to construct that, and then we will reveal it. Okay, it's time to reveal it. This is also one that we've seen before. I find it a little curious when I look at this. It makes me feel like the axes are tilted by the way that these 
arrows are drawn, but if you look at them carefully, there's no tilting or anything like that. It's just an optical illusion, or at least it's an optical illusion to me. But here we have that kind of rotating field, and the rotation is getting stronger and stronger the farther away from the center I go. So just to summarize, there are a couple of different kinds of general behavior that we have for vector uh, functions. We're going to be describing the way that they change by things called divergence or curl. We're going to be getting into that a lot, a little bit more over the coming classes and coming weeks, but I want to use some pictures. You can always think of divergence as something that is kind of like exploding, so everything's coming out of a central region. Or you can think of it as a drain, or sometimes it's called a sink, where everything is moving into a point. So if everything goes into a point like a drain, like you're draining water out of a pool, or if things are coming out kind of like you had an explosion, those kinds of behaviors for vector fields are called divergence. Curl tends to describe what happens when a vector field has some kind of rotation in it. So the classic picture of this would be something kind of like a vortex that's rotating around where I have a vector field that is pointing in the tangential direction of a circle, and that's illustrated for you here. But if you look at the second case, you can see here, even though there's no x dependence to this, in the y direction, this vector is clearly rotating as I change y. And the sense of that rotation is given for you with this curved arrow. And that's another way that something can have a curved behavior to it. And this is a vector field that will have a non-zero curl as well.